Hello subscribers, hello others. It's David Hoffman, filmmaker, with another clip from 1979. Some of you may have seen this clip, but you haven't seen everything I'm about to show. So the time in 1979 is the dawn of the information age. And I'm making this documentary for television on the information age, and I've got to find evidences of it. So we pick a town, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, and we go there, and there's a computer shop store there, and we walk in cold, me with the camera, my sound man Tom with a long boom and a shotgun microphone. Hello, we say, we're here to do something on the information age and the dawn of computers. And there's some kid there and his father, and you're about to see that scene. So before I run the clip, I just want to give you a sense of that time. So in 1979, there were 500,000 computers in the world. And people were building computers like from kits. I think there was an Atari kit, the Apple IIe was kind of a kid, I think. And this kid and other kids around the country, the geeks, were really involved with computers. Their parents didn't know anything about it. Hardly anyone knew anything about it. But it was absolutely mesmerizing to a kid like Jay. So remember again, what you are watching are outtakes. The intakes I either used in the film, my finished film, or when it was all over, I threw them away. I'm not taking any credit for this act of complete idiocy, but I threw away everything except these old 16 millimeter films which were in my basement and I copied them. So you're seeing jump cutting, you're seeing questions, but you're also seeing some amazing footage. If you hang on till the end, I'll tell you how one of my subscribers found this guy and his father and what they think now. Jeff? Yes. Go ahead, Jeff. Can you fill me in on what we're seeing or not seeing? I'm not quite sure I can tell you what you're seeing or not seeing. Uh, well, is he exceptional, or are there other kids like him? There are, uh, where he goes to school, several other uh, kids his age who are involved actively in computers, with computers, going to college. And uh, I would say that he's exceptional on the standpoint of, uh, you know, of the kids in the school system, there are maybe 20 that are capable of doing this out of uh, several thousand. But uh, there are more, more and more are getting involved in it, and, and uh, it's really becoming uh, quite, I think, quite a positive influence on their lives. I hope it is, at least. You know, where he is now, I can't imagine where he'll be five years from now, or where someone his age will be five years from now. It's just, just amazing. Are you the only kid in Cedar Rapids who can use a computer? I think, well, they, there's only like, I think, five of us that I know that really know how to use it the right way. Other kids know how to use them, but they just play Star Trek and football and golf and stuff like that. And as, as a matter of fact, in conjunction with what Jay is doing, probably within the next several months, I'll be receiving a different kind of computer through my company that I can actually carry with me on the road. Uh, as a matter of fact, they have the system here. It's the first time I've seen it, and it's quite interesting. Uh, it's about the size of a typewriter, and I can get information directly at that point. Uh, I think it's phenomenal. Uh, frequently, the future is looked at as being a, going to be a very mechanical, machine-like thing with the robots and people who are like robots. Do you have any fears about the, the future and your son in that regard? No, no, no not whatsoever. I, describe I, that. I, I don't. I don't think. I think that, that the human being, the human species, will always control machines. I can never see machines taking over, as long as there's someone to sit that has to sit and push the buttons and input the information. And uh, someone who has emotions and feelings, uh, machines will never take over. To the question of, uh, you know, what, what is all this microcomputer and computer business going to do to our society? In the past, many things have, uh, many levels of technology have, have stratified our society. Uh, I see computers, especially microcomputers, as uh, creating a whole different manner of technology, or rather of society, in that there's going to be a vertical stratification in society. There are going to be those truck drivers that can deal very simply and very easily with a terminal and will be capable of getting their delivery schedules out of the terminal. There will be those truck drivers that will not. 
Uh, in the same light, there will be those MDs who will have and use the computer as a tool, and uh, then there will be those MDs who prefer to look at medicine as a, a very strictly as an art, uh, one that should not be approached by a computer or any so totally objective device. Uh, certainly that you can see from those two examples that we're talking about uh, housewives that deal with computers and housewives that don't, uh, cab drivers that do and don't, uh, so on and so on it goes. Uh, as to this question of information society, uh, those that will deal with the computer will be far and away ahead of those that do not. Uh, Computers are designed to eliminate tedium in our lives. If, uh, if a computer does not do that, the probability is that you, you really didn't need a computer to begin with. You probably needed more arms and legs. Um, it's, it's going to be very interesting. The future, uh, this question of how many jobs are going to be created and how many jobs are going to be totally obsoleted by the computer. A computer really has never obsoleted a job that didn't need to be obsoleted. Uh, the case is that we are humans and we are much more adaptable to, to our environment than the computer is to its own. Uh, we should be the ones that adapt and uh, let that computer take over the tedium so then that three-day work week really does become a reality. At Slate, my son, uh, now 15, has had an interest in electronics towards computers, but he was undecided. I had no way of developing his interest and mine. I didn't want to push him into this field. Uh, we purchased, I purchased a mini computer, microcomputer, what we call now, as a hobby. And it became quite stimulating to both of us to the point where it was disturbing to our family that we're spending more time programming in our off times than paying attention to the remainder of the family and it has caused a great interest in my child. Uh, I feel the, with the future of, te of uh, the technology in changing towards computers, uh, I wanted to continue on, so we went and we bought a large number of books, uh, programming we self-taught ourselves since there were no courses available at that time. It seems to be a very, uh, a very fantastic and uh, hypnotic field. Uh, once you start, you just, can't stop. It, it's, it's something you can't explain. Computers are now in every field, not just electronics. Uh, an example, we are doing a program, which is a s instruction set to do our income tax, my income tax. My son is far exceeding any of the programming uh, procedures that I am able to do since his interests are much greater. And it, it is also, I'm part-time and he's spending most of his full-time in, in, in developing his uh, programming techniques. Give me an idea of, of when you look to the future, <clears throat> what kind of world it would be, whether you would, worry, wh wh whether you would worry about his future if he was sort of illiterate in this, uh, that kind of world. In other words, is it going to be a world that requires certain things of people that weren't required when you were growing up? Yes, I think, uh, I think television right now is showing the need for many industries and changes our exposure to the new uh, technologies of developing from the space program has brought this to be. Uh, I do see a great need for computers. In fact, uh, all the newspaper articles that are, have been written just recently are showing that computers will take over our business uh, transactions of purchasing food, banking, and et cetera and there are a great number of opportunities for children of this age now to get into it and develop themselves towards this direction. I think the employment picture would just be phenomenal, and I'm trying to see how we can compete in a world of many various uh, industries and uh, vocations. So for three years, I have this clip up, and I'm asking my subscribers and millions of other people who have seen it, who is he? How can I find him? I don't have any record of him. Long ago, the release was thrown out. And a fellow from England, Adam Summerfield, who's a technical guy, says, I can find him. I said, go ahead, give it a try. And he does. So Chad and Jay Ehrlich. Jay the boy, Chad the man. Chad is still alive, apparently, and healthy. Jay is now the vice president of product safety on behalf of the public at Baxter, one of the big pharma companies in Chicago. And Jay wants to do another interview to tell me what happened. I mean, was he a geek who actually succeeded and then went into this profession of pharmaceuticals? Or did he never really have any interest in computers? I don't know. 
So I'm going to set up an interview with Jay soon, which should be very interesting. Thank you for watching this. David Hoffman, filmmaker.